uh, going to present um, Secure Scuttlebutt. So Secure Scuttlebutt is a, a decentralized, uh, cryptographically secure protocol that gives you a data structure that maps completely naturally to um, social media applications. So um, here is a, a prototype of a thing, you know, there's users, there's posts, they can say things. Each, um, that is, hang on, sorry. So each user um, is identified by a public key. Um, this is basically the only like, easy way, the only natural way of representing identity in a de decentralized system. So they have a private key and they can post a message and each message um, includes a signature and the hash of the previous message. So it's like a blockchain per person, but there's no proof of work uh, or anything like that, it's just signatures. So everyone gets their own append-only feed, and then um, messages can then, um, feeds can then interact with each other. Um, for example, um, here's the message that said, I followed Yosh, and this message contains, is a post by me um, that includes a link to his public key and states that I'm following him. So I've kind of broadcast this thing and now my feed and his feed are cryptographically linked. Um, so you get, you start off with um, linked lists, but then it becomes a graph of linked lists because they can, the linked lists can refer to each other. Um, and this, this maps directly to any kind of, um, you know, all like Twitter, Facebook, whatever, are all around the idea of user feeds and following people and then a stream. And the, the reason I decided to build a, a decentralized social network was because I wanted to build a decentralized something and one day I realized that the the user experience of um, social media is already decentralized um, it really it wants to be decentralized because when you go to twitter.com you don't see the same twitter.com as the next person um, you see a twitter.com based on who you have selected to follow so you see different content than someone else it's uh, subjective and so that, that maps really naturally onto, um, um, so the user interface layer is already decentralized. We have just mapped the network to the same structure. So we just don't need a centralized server and it still works exactly, it still feels exactly right. Um, this is the like, basic sort of uh, application and there's a couple of others that are interesting. Um, the most exciting one is uh, we have uh, a GitHub clone that works on top of Secure Scuttlebutt. And just, uh, yep. So it basically has all the important things that GitHub has. Um, this is the repo for Git SSB, which is the thing we're current for the web, the thing we're currently looking at. Um, we can clone that. Ah, oh, I forgot that. Okay, it's just getting the latest thing. It might that might take a second? Um, as you can see, it has everything that you know. You can you can basically easily implement anything kind of that that makes sense as a social network on top of this model. Uh, another one we have is uh, this is a SoundCloud clone. Screen's a bit funny, so um, yeah, so people post, can post music, um, links to the, um, the metadata comes through Secure Scuttlebutt, and then the music comes through, um, through a web torrent. Um, it's very easy to uh, interact to like, get one protocol and link to another one because you just need a, um, you know, these protocols all have 
sort of a secure pointer into anything. So um, um, you get a magnet link, and that lets you securely identify the torrent you're referring to. Um, those are the basic things. And the, the, the interesting thing, so at the moment, the internet isn't very good um, here. But it doesn't matter, because all of this content here comes, is coming from a database that's on my computer. And because it's so secure Scuttlebutt, the uh, name, um, a Scuttlebutt is the barrel that today's water rations are stored in on a sailing ship. So it's like a water cooler on a, on a sailing ship. So it has exactly the same connotations of gossip. So secure Scuttlebutt is a secure gossip protocol. So unlike insecure gossip, I can talk to you and be like, oh, John said, John said that you smell. But I can't, but with a secure gossip protocol, I can't um, put words in other people's mouth. I can relay things for people, but I can't um, change what they said. Um, which well, I think fixes the worst things about gossip. So with secure gossip, it means I can relay, you don't need to get my messages directly from me, you can get them from a mutual friend. And this is really, this is gonna be very handy um, in, the, in the zombie apocalypse because all of the national level infrastructure and um, um, oceanic cables and probably will, might, might stop working, but I'll be able to take my laptop from my um, secure anti-zombie fortress and someone, one of my friends can go visit you and your thing and they'll be able to carry the news um, from our base to your base and then replicate stuff over there and it will just naturally work within the the same design of the user interface. It will just be higher latency. But um, it will still, like, it, it, the, the, the interface will, is basically right. And this is also a good uh, thing for space exploration because if you live on the moon, the round trip time to Earth is one second, um, which is kind of painful if you're doing HTTP because everything is a request and a response. The moon to Earth is kind of like, one second is, is livable. There's people that already um, suffer this kind of latency. Um, I grew up on a farm and my parents have, um, in New Zealand, my parents have two-way satellite internet, which has one second latency, so it's, it's like living on the moon. But if you lived on Mars, um, it's a 20 minute round trip. So uh, that is gonna be, that's gonna be like um, impossible um, for HTTP. It's just, it's like, it's not going to be pleasant at all. But with um, this kind of replication async model, it should still pretty much work. Um, so everyone in this, it's kind of like, the other thing is it, is it doesn't have, there's no global structure. You don't need to have all of the database, in the, all of the data in the universe. And that's a very good thing for, for things like communication because like with email, um, you put a lot of the effort in email goes to not having all of the email. Um, people just spam all the time and you don't want to have all of the emails in the universe. Putting all of the emails on the blockchain would be a terrible, terrible idea. Um, you only want to have the good emails and um, a, a follow model um, like Twitter is basically a, what I call solicited spam. So you follow the people that you are willing to receive anything from and then Whatever they post, you deserve to get it. Um, if you don't like what someone's saying, you can just unfollow them. So it doesn't really have a spam problem. Um, in, in the case of Twitter, the bit where the spam, where spam does come in, is spam comes at people um, with replies. So replies, there's nothing stopping. Anyone with a Twitter account who replies to you, well, you'll get a notification about that, even if you didn't want that thing. So um, in... Um, and, and sort of that's the push vector, and that's where the spam comes through. And secure scuttlebutt, we, one thing that's interesting is we don't actually, that can't happen. You can only, you only get messages from people that you have replicated, and the default behavior that we've programmed is you follow people, and you're, then so the pe there's the people that you followed, and the people that they followed, and that's the, the people that, you rep that it replicates by default. So it means you can get replies from friends or friends of friends, but not from complete strangers. Um, and 
if you want to restrict what other people can see, um, you basically just do that with encryption instead. So um, there's public messages, like these, are, these ones are all public messages. And uh, then we have private messages, nothing very interesting, but so this is a private message I sent, so I can see the uh, contents, but um, I can, if I retrieve it via the command line tool, Um, the, you'll see the plain text, or the cipher text of the message, which is um, opaquely encrypted. Um, it still has a signature, and it still has my public key on it, so this tells the world that I posted an encrypted message. However, um, if this message wasn't for you, you're not able to decrypt it. And um, so you notice that there's no to field at all. So whenever one see, someone sees a private message, they attempt to decrypt it, and if it, if it succeeds, it's because the message was for them. If they failed, it's because it wasn't for them. So the only way you can find out if a message is for you or not is by successfully decrypting it. Um, and this means that you can't tell who is actually talking to who, um, because any encrypted message could be for anyone in the network. Um, and it also, you can, uh, a encrypted message can be for multiple recipients, and it just um, encrypts, has, starts with multiple keys. So there's a key, and there's a key, and there's a key, and you just try to decrypt it um, like multiple times. You just, you just you try to decrypt it the maximum amount of times, which is eight. Um, you go through and decrypt things. If nothing opens, um, the message wasn't for you. Um, obviously, this would be unscalable if you had all of the messages in the world, but since you only replicate your social network, um, it's not particularly a problem because the, the, the number of, of feeds isn't particularly large. And um, it only needs, um, it can try like multiple times and will only, um, it's, not, it's, not very partic it's not particularly, you can, you can fail to decrypt quite cheaply. Um, that, that's the model we currently have implemented and on the to-do list is um, messages that can work like a, like a Facebook group where you can add people to the group and they can all post, um, which has a slightly different um, uh, cost model, but um, that will give you the ability to create like a private community and then you can layer all kinds of things in that. Um, yeah, so it has a, it basically has, gives you kind of a database, you can the database. It's quite straightforward to build uh, applications on top of. Um, it's all written in JavaScript and um, Electron, and there's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the basic stuff. Oh, yeah, for pitches, so pitches are um, like here we have a, um, like we have, um, you know, avatar, people have the avatars. And anyway, the, the, you can link to a hash of an external object, and um, when the peers talk to each other, if they see an object and they, the app wants to display it, then they'll just request that too, and you can, you, can you can get like small files that way. So like up to five megabytes suitable for like photographs and short MP3s and stuff like this. But the idea is to automatically replicate this stuff so that you support like a long tail of content. Um, and then for, if it was something like a movie or something like that, you'd replicate that over something like BitTorrent um, or IPFS that's suitable for really large things because the BitTorrent model was kind of like, is let down on the long tail um, of content. Um, but basically if your friend posts a thing, then just download it, it's okay. And if someone's posting stuff that offends you, then unfollow them. Um, one more thing. Oh yeah, and the, the okay, so the, uh, the, the thing that is counterintuitive uh, at first perhaps is that um, everything here, every, this is a subjective system. Everything is, there's no, so we have names, but nothing, you don't own a name. Your name is just what people call you. So it's a pet name system, and you can just change someone's name. Um, 
Um, so I could, I could just change Joss's name to Pooface. Um, and that would then be permanently on my, my record that I had called him Pooface. I'm not going to do that, but I could. Um, if he pissed me off, I could do that. Um, and then whenever you, whenever you mention someone in a message, um, let me find an example. It basically creates a cryptographic, or it lo creates a, a log that, there's someone just mentioned someone. Okay, so here's, here's one where I've mentioned a git, uh, a repo. So the percent means that this is a message. So I've named this repo SSB sort, which is just one of the internal uh, modules. Um, so now there's like a record that I consider this thing to be called SSB sort. Um, when you mention someone in name, even in a conversation, it basically just creates a record that you call, uh, here we go, um, here, uh, Susan posted a message where she uses my public key, links my public key to the name Dominic. So here's a piece of evidence that she calls this thing, that she calls this public key Dominic. Um, and that creates like a social proof that that is my name within this community. Um, this means that you can't own a name, but basically this makes, this solves the uh, problem if you don't have squatting and it means you don't need a central authority and this is what enables it to be like effortlessly um, decentralized and actually I think humans adapt to this really naturally because that's what they're used to in everyday life is your name is just what your friends call you. Um, in, any questions? Um, that's okay. So what happens is, um, so that's that's just a user um, experience thing. So I can um, just there's like an auto suggest thing, and then it links to this needs a bit of work. So this is um, this is the main me that you notice. So this is says that it has been mentioned 885 times, and that was my old key that I lost. Uh, at some point, so that's, um, nobody talks about that one anymore. And here's a other few other ones that I was uh, testing. Um, but you'll basically, you see that there's a group consensus for this key. Um, we could improve this with like avatar and they'd show that this one is your friend or that one's some stranger or things like that. Was this showing only your, your circle of friends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks very much. Oh, uh, one thing, sorry. Um, if you would like to try it, um, if you'd like to try it, you can install it from this location. And it works on um, Mac, on Linux, and on Windows. Um, and you can use this public, this um, invite code to join the network. Um, uh, yeah, and on if you're on the that Wi-Fi, the the. Um, Agora team floor, then um, you should hopefully be able to see my laptop on the network and just like connect to me, friend me directly, and then you'll get the, the content directly through the Wi-Fi from my computer. Cool, thanks very much.